One of the first things that you need to get good and fluent with using when you become an Amazon seller is your Amazon Seller Central dashboard. Now, when you first log into your dashboard, it's going to look very foreign and confusing to you. But once you learn how to navigate it, it really is straightforward. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys how to navigate on your Amazon Seller Central dashboard. If you're finding it to be confusing right now or you're a new Amazon seller just getting started, then this video is exactly for you. After watching it, you're going to be able to feel super comfortable maneuvering through your dashboard, learning where everything is and how it all works functions. But first, I'm Cassandra with Profit Guru, and on this channel, it is the only channel that you need for everything Amazon FBA related. I am here every single week for you explaining how to sell on Amazon and how to scale that business. So if you're not, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. And if you are, I appreciate you so much. Show me some love down below in the comments and let me know how long you've been here with me on Profit Guru. All right, let's get right into it. Your Seller Central dashboard is going to look a little complex at first, but once you figure out how to maneuver it, it's not quite so hard. So right here at the top, you're going to see all of the different marketplaces that they have that you can be selling in. Next, you'll see the number of orders that you have opened. If any buyers have sent you any messages, those are going to be right here. And you do have to respond back to those within 24 hours. So if you get a message here, make sure that you click on it and read it. If there's not a response needed, then that's all you click. There's going to be a little section that says no response needed, but don't just ignore these buyer messages. Next, we have our buy box wins. So let's look right here and think about this little Uncanto sticker book that I was selling. On that listing, there could be 20 different sellers that are selling the same sticker book. So whichever seller is holding the buy box at the time, so say the buy box was at $8, Whichever seller was selling it at that price and is holding the buy box, when a customer clicks at to cart, they're the ones that make the sale. So you want to have those buy box wins. That means that when somebody orders it, you get the sale versus those other 19 sellers on the listing. So this is going to show you the percentage of buy box wins you have. The total balance that you have available for Amazon to pay you out. IPI right here is going to be the Inventory Performance Index. And this is a measurement that Amazon is giving you that says how well you are managing your inventory. So basically, do you have a lot of stock that's just sitting there and not selling through and you're just wasting space at the warehouse? Are you using the allotted amount that they're giving you? Those types of things. And then a lot of these things down here are just going to be things that are kind of there. Some information maybe, so we can see news right here. If you wanted to make a coupon, which makes it more likely that you are going to get a sale, you could do that here. And then it's going to pop up and show you some listings that need your attention. So I'm out of stock for this. It's telling me, you know, do you want to restock this? And here it's showing me that my price is not competitive for the buy box. So I could come right here and I could update my prices. And then I can keep shuffling through and saying. So for example, this lipstick, the suggested price is 99 cents. And it's saying, you know, my price is $6.28. So that's not competitive. Do you want to lower your price? And then if we scroll down a little bit more, here is where we can go to the university. So on the university is where you can find videos and trainings for literally anything pertaining to selling on Amazon. So let's click here into the university. If you get stuck on something, this is definitely the place to come and try and find the answer. So you can search for something very specific up here in the search bar, or you can come down here to the side tabs and see what they have. So if you're having trouble listing a product, you could come here. Maybe I'm trying to create a new listing and I want uh, to get maybe a GTIN exemption and I'm not really sure how. Talking about account health, if you wanted more about that, you could come right here. And you're going to see a ton of nice little videos and trainings to really teach you anything that you might want to know. Coming back to our main dashboard, let's go up here now to this little settings gear. And here is where you can put in, if you need to change anything on your account info right there, your return settings, and something big is right here, your user permissions. This is going to be important if you wanna add specific people onto your account to help you to manage it, maybe when you get to the point of needing a virtual assistant, or if you want different apps to come on and link to your Seller Central account, you're going to have to give them permission right here. So say I just hired a new virtual assistant and I want them to come in and help me with my inventory or maybe setting up an ad campaign, I'm going to come to manage permissions. So maybe I hired a new virtual assistant 
and I want to make it so that they can log into my Amazon account and see whatever features that I want them to be doing. I'm going to put in their name and then their email address right here and then invite them. Next, what I need to do after they accept the invitation is I need to manage their permissions. Obviously, I'm not going to want somebody to just have free range of my entire account and be able to do every single small little thing. So here is where I set exactly which permissions those people who are logging into my account have. If I wanted them to have capabilities to help me with my advertising and my A plus content, then I would turn that on. Anything that I want, I would turn on and anything that I didn't, I would untoggle so that they did not have access to. Maybe I didn't want them to be able to reprice my stuff or to look at my account health, I would turn those off. So that's how you add different permissions and users to have access to your account. Next, we're going to come over to the other side and click the hamburger. When you want to add a product to the catalog or check to see if you're on gated in a product and that you can sell it, you're going to come here to catalog and then add products. So let's say I want to add some Burt's Bees products. Let's say I found this four pack, the exact match of lip balms for a dollar on clearance and I wanted to sell them. I'm going to come to the listing, come all the way down to the product details and then copy this ASIN right here. Now I'm going to put it here and search. The product pops up. For the condition, I'm going to select new. This is new in package. I just bought it from the store and I'm going to apply to sell. If you're not already approved in this category or this brand, then the selling application will pop up and you're going to simply request approval. One of two things will happen here. It's either going to next pop up the listing application where you can then input your price and all of that stuff, or it's going to pop up and say it needs more information for you to sell this brand. So let's request approval. This is what you always want to do. Request approval as many places as you can so that you know exactly what is available for you to sell. And now I can see that the selling application pops up. So that means the brand Burt's Bees, I'm not permitted to sell. I can't do that. And if I wanted to, I would have to get a purchase invoice for the products from a manufacturer or distributor that Amazon accepts or a letter from Burt's Bees authorizing me to sell their products. So that's how I know if I'm gated in a product, gated means I cannot sell it. But let me search great value here and let's say I was able to find these zipper snack bags and I wanted to sell those. So the condition again is new, sell this product. And now the offer page pops up. So because the offer page popped up and not a selling application, this means that I am ungated. I can sell this product. And this is now where I can see the ASIN, the UPC number, and I would put in my offer. So I would choose if I'm merchant fulfilling this or fulfilling by Amazon. If I'm doing fulfilled by Amazon, I don't do this method because what I do is send in big shipments at a time. So I use what's called inventory lab to do that and input all of my products at once and create my shipping plan. But if I'm merchant fulfilling, remember merchant fulfilling means that I'm my own warehouse and every time a customer orders, I'm going to specifically package it and ship it off myself. So when I'm merchant fulfilling it, this is how I do it. I put in my price that I want to sell it for, how many I have available, the condition as new, select merchant fulfilled, and then make sure that it is in the right spot. So I'm selling it in the American marketplace. And then I save and finish. And within 15 minutes, that's going to be live and people can start ordering it and I can start shipping it out to people. So if you're merchant fulfilling, this is exactly how you're going to want to start inputting your merchant fulfilled products into your catalog. And within 15 minutes, they will be active and you can start getting orders. Now let's come over and look at inventory. So once you have stuff in your account, manage all inventory is where you're going to be able to see all those products. Now all your inventory is going to be right here in one place. So you can see the image will pop up, the SKU number, which is what you make, and the ASIN number, which is the identification number for Amazon, how it identifies the products in its catalog. You'll be able to see the day you created it, how many you have available, and right here is really cool. It'll show you the estimated fees. So I know for this specific product, which actually is inactive and out of stock right now, the featured offer price is $19.59. When I was selling it, I was selling it for $14.29. And from that, they are going to take $6.54. So if I click on these fees, I can see the breakdown. If the customer is paying $14.29, $1.14 of that is going to go to Amazon for the referral fee. $5.40 are going to go for my FBA fees for having it in their warehouse and having them send it out. 
And then the estimated net proceeds is $7.75 to me. Now from that number, I would subtract the cost of goods, what I paid for that product. So say I paid $5.75 for this product, minus that out, and that means that the profits to me in the end is $2. So right now I have it set to just view all of my inventory. If I don't wanna see the ones that are inactive and out of stock, then I would just go right here and filter it to just see the active. But maybe I do wanna see what's inactive so that I know what to reorder. Then I would just click here and all of my inactive ASINs would pop right up. And then I can also choose to see the view here. Right now I'm seeing all of the products that I'm selling, either FBA, letting Amazon do it, or merchant fulfilling it. Maybe I'm selling some things merchant fulfilled at the same time out of my house. If I only wanted to see the merchant fulfilled items, I could filter that out here too. And anytime you need to edit something that's in your inventory, make a change to something, this is also where you're going to come is into manage inventory. And you'll click here where it says edit, the little drop down. And now you can see everything that you can edit on that listing. Maybe you want to close the listing or delete it. Maybe for some reason you need to remove those products and have them sent back to you or maybe get them destroyed. For example, maybe a brand came at you with an IP complaint and said, hey, remove your products. This is how you would do it. You would just create the removal order. And then if you wanted to change the listing at all, maybe this is your listing that you made, you would come right here to manage all of that on the listing. And then this would pop up to edit the listing. So even if you didn't create the listing, but maybe it's a wholesale product that you sell and you want to get some better pictures up on that listing, you would come right here and submit them. You could take those photos yourself or hire somebody to get some professional ones made and upload those here. And maybe the listing is one that somebody else created, but you have the rights to sell those products and you want to change the description or the keywords. If it's not converting well or whoever set up the listing just didn't do a good job, then you would do so right here on the edit. If you are merchant fulfilling, when an order is placed by a customer and now it's time for you to package it up and ship it out, where you're going to come is right here to orders and manage orders. And then your orders will come right up and you will click on the one you're working on. It tells you exactly what to do. You'll input the dimensions, the weight, and then you buy the shipping label right there and print it out and then bring it to whichever shipping service you chose. So if it's UPS or USPS, you would just drop it off to the right place. Very easy to fill merchant fulfilled orders. For the advertising, this is probably only going to be applicable to you if you're doing private label or maybe creating some custom bundles and trying to run some PPC on that, then you would come here to the campaign manager and set those up. A plus content and this vine, these are for when you have your own brand trademark. So if you're trying to build a brand on Amazon, you have to go through brand registry and get a trademark. And then you would have access to this A plus content manager and this vine program where you're actually paying people for review views for your products. Reports is also important and this is where you can pull all of the data and the spreadsheets. So at tax time when you have your CPA or whoever is handling your Amazon account, you would want to come here to the payments and print off a year view and it shows you everything. How much you've made on Amazon minus all of the different expenses and fees. And then another report you'll want to pull for tax time is the inventory report so that your CPA can see how much inventory you still have on hand. So this is where you come to print any of those good reports that you need. And then down here, again, once you are building your brand and doing brand stuff on Amazon, not just listing arbitrage to resell or just making bundles to resell, once you are trying to build your own brand, that's when these tabs will become relevant. And that's really all that there is to managing your Amazon seller account. There really is not that much confusing about it once you start playing with it. So get into your account right now, start clicking around and learning how to maneuver around your dashboard. I hope that was really helpful for you guys. And now you're able to see just how easy it is to navigate through your Amazon Seller Central dashboard. Thank you so much for being here with me this week. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss one of my videos. That's it for this week, and I'll see you in the next one.